Praise the Lord, people of God. Praise the Lord for this great day. Amen. Being Wednesday, July the 11th, I believe. I lost track of the days, but God is good all the time. Just want to come on a little bit tonight to encourage you, to strengthen you just a little bit more on this journey. Father, we thank you once again for an opportunity to bless your name. We thank you for those that are listening in, that something would be said to encourage their hearts, encourage their souls. We thank you, God, for an opportunity of life. Each day is a blessing. Each day somebody else didn't wake up. And each day, God, we are thankful that we are allowed to see another day. We are thankful that you call us by name and that we rose by your grace and your mercy. We are thankful, God, that we woke up with a sound mind, a mind determined to live righteous, a mind determined to live holy. We have pitfalls along the way. We have difficulties along the way. We have letdowns. We have things that frustrate us along the way. But, God, we're still holding on. We're still holding on to your unchanging hand. We're still holding on to your promise. The word of God that says you have thoughts about us, thoughts of good and not evil, a hope in the future. And that all things, no matter how we see it, no matter what we think about it, all things work together for our good. So there's trouble in life. There's troubles in on your job. There's trouble in your home. But I'm glad the old songwriter said trouble won't last always. And for this, God, your words say in all things to give you thanks. And we thank you for the good and the bad. We thank you for the trials and tribulation of life because not the actual trials and tribulation, but the things that we go through, that you bring us through, that you carry us through to make us stronger, to make us better, to get us in a position that we can glorify your name, to be vessels of honor, to be that person that you have called us, ordained for us to be anointed, to walk in the power of God. And we thank you for this opportunity. We ask you to bless those at the sound of my voice, that they will feel the anointing. They will sense the urgency of your word, that time is winding up and that we must get it right while we have a chance. And that we can intercede, be that watchman on the wall, to intercede for those that are less fortunate because time is truly winding up. And we have to keep praying and have to keep standing in the gap. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so coming on shortly. Amen. Just wanted to encourage you tonight. Amen. When the scripture that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I will be with you always until the end of the earth. God made a promise. Now, let's get that straight. That promise is to his people. You must first understand the Bible was written to the saints. The things that God was correcting in the different churches Paul was writing about and the, talking to the children of Israel in the Old Testament time. It was written to them that were called by his name. It was written to the church. We want to always put sinners in the midst of that. Amen. There's a place for them in the scriptures as well. But until they repent, the standards of righteousness and holiness was written to the churches. In Revelation, it talks a lot about to the church of Philippi, to the church of this, to the church of that. And when Paul wrote the epistles, amen, he was talking to particular churches, the church of Thessalonica, the church at Ephesus, the church at different locations. He was talking to the church. Why? Because the Bible says judgment shall first begin at the house of God. And if judgment begins at the house of God and the saved shall scarcely make it, what about the ungodly and the unrighteous? They would not have a place to make it. So we have to be the example, the standard of righteousness, the standard of holiness, that those that don't truly know God as their Savior, I ain't talking about know of God, but I'm talking about truly don't know God as their Savior, that they will see the glorious light of God. We are the salt of the earth, the scripture said. We are the light in the midst of darkness. Darkness represents sin. We are not to be conformed to the world, but we are to be transformed by the way we think, by the way we act, and by the way we carry ourselves. And the Bible said, don't consider it strange when people treat you different because you don't do the thing you used to do. Are you a leader? Are you a father? follower. Amen. Are you a fountain or are you a drain? We have to hold a standard of holiness according to the word of God, not according to man's doctrine, but according to the word of God that we will live up to what God has called us to be. So I wanted to encourage you tonight, amen, to let you know that God will never leave you. He is talking to his people. We already identified yesterday in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name, he is directing it to the saints of the most high God. The scripture said that they, they have the spirit of God, not they that think they have the spirit of God, but they, they have the spirit of God are the sons of God and they that knew do not are none of his. It's really simple. You either a child of the devil or you're a child of God. People don't like to hear that. Nobody want to be called a child of the devil. But when you reject Jesus Christ, the Bible calls that an antichrist spirit. When you reject the word of God, when you tr reject the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, which is the apostles doctrine that began in Acts chapter 2. When you reject the word of God, the Bible say, dust your hands up, wipe your feet, don't have nothing to do with them because you can't make them change. They got to want to change. God is constantly giving us opportunity after opportunity. Why? Because he has never left us nor forsake us. Even when we backslide, the Bible says he's married to the backslider. He's always trying to restore us back to him. 
The choice is ours. We talked about that a few days ago. The choice is ours. So since God is married to the backslider, he's always encouraging us. He always convicting us. Why? He chasing them that he loves. He corrects, whoops, them that he loves. If you're not getting whooped, you need to be worried because God corrects them that he loves. Amen. So I'm thankful to God that he whoops me. So like a parent, the Bible says, what man, what's, what father, amen, that will not discipline his son, will not whoop his son, say he loves him. You allow your son to live in sin. You allow your son to continue to do the thing that will shorten his days. How can you say you love your son if you never correct him? There are people who don't believe in the rod. They believe, people don't believe in whoopings at all. And we wonder why our society is running rapid with children jumping on their parents and children being so rebellious. Because we're living in time that the world tells the children, call 911 if your parents put their hands on you. Do this if your parents touch this or do that. So we give children more right. They can't pay not one bill. But what do the word of God say? That's why the Bible says better to obey God then man, sometimes you got to stand for right. No, forgive me. All the time you got to stand for right when it comes to the word of God. But I want to encourage you tonight, the people of the most high God, those that don't know Jesus truly as their personal savior, but you know about him because you go to church and you got religious standards. Amen. There's a time that we have to walk into a place of true worship. Because the time come and we are living in the time that the true worshiper shall worship him in spirit and in truth, not with a fleshly emotion and not with a, 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 a praise that look good, turn the church upside down and raise hell when you walk out of it. But a true worship that displays the characteristics of Jesus Christ, which is love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness, long suffering, temperance, which is the fruits of the spirit, according to Galatians 5 and 22. Amen. So we have to display a, a standard of holiness, a standard of righteousness if God is with us. Why do I say if God is with us? Because we say, because we feel with the Holy Spirit that greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? But if greater is on the inside of you, then there should be some display of greater. Because greater should be displayed on the outside because the change comes from the inside that makes a change on the outside. It reflects the outside. The Bible says not what's on the outside that defiles a man, but it what's on the inside that defiles a man. So you can't change the outside without there being a change on the inside because everything is spiritual first, then natural. The inside has to have a change. There has to be a change in your heart. There has to be a change in your mentality. There has to be a change in the way you address things. Amen. And when the inside is changed, when the inside has been purged, when we create the scripture that says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And we say, wash me with hips up, make me white as snow. Do we really understand what that means? Do we really understand what we're asking God to do? We're saying, Lord, I surrender to you. Clean me up. Get all this filth and nastiness out of me. Get all this sin and rebelliousness out of me. Get all the discord and, and dissension outside of me. Get all this gossip and backbiting out of me, God. I want to live holy. I want to speak things that are lovely, things that are true, things that are just, things that are honest, things that are of a good virtue. I want to think on those things, the things that are pleasing to God. I want to encourage you tonight. God will never leave his people. Them that are called by his name. He said, I'll be a very present help in the time of trouble. I'll be a rock in the time of need. Amen. I will hide you in the cliff of the rock. I will hide you under the protecting arms of my wings. I will keep thee, saith the Lord, because I am the one that was and is and is to come. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm going to be there at the end, even though I was already there at the beginning. And if you don't get it right, there shall be a, white, a great white throne judgment. And the great white throne judgment me when the sinners are brought out of hell to stand before the judgment seat of God to bow down and confess that Jesus Christ when we do it on the earth we wouldn't do it on earth we wouldn't live holy but that's coming a day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that we had to stand before God not we because I'm not planning on being in the group but the sinners the those that rejected Christ those that were going to church in religious mentality those that had a standard of holiness but denying the power thereof those that was in the house still lost those that were backsliding they shall be in a position of spiritual religious life and the men of them are going to live hell wide open and the bible said they'd be brought out of hell i'm not judging people i'm just telling you what the scripture says the bible said they'd be brought out of hell to bow down and confess that jesus christ is lord it's just to be thrown in the lake of fire with the devil and his angel never getting out of it never getting rid of that torment and agony and pain why not make it the first time why not catch the truth or the, what's the truth i'm talking about when you die in christ amen you feel in the presence of the lord if the rapture take you you forever in the presence of the lord but if you don't live by the standards of the word not by my standard not by the apostolic standard not by the pentecostal standard not by the baptist or methodist standard not by the presbyterian jehovah witness seventh event it doesn't matter those are not the standards that get you in the standard 
standard of holiness, because God said, be ye holy for I am holy. The standard of righteousness. God said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That standard that is displayed in them 66 books, that is the standard of righteousness. That's the standard of holiness. And the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The thief coming, but the kill still and destroy. But I came, Jesus said, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Why? Because if you with me, if I abide in you, you abide in me. I never leave you nor forsake you. It may feel like you by yourself. It may feel like you lost some good friends. It may feel like people turned on you. It may feel like people don't understand. I'm talking about church folks as well or outside of church. You may feel like you're all alone. You can be married and still feel lonely. It may feel like that people have abandoned you and you in this fight all by yourself. Because did not Elijah say, Lord, me and me only have not bowed down and worshiped Baal. And God had to let him know, hold up, brother, I got a remnant. They have not bowed down and kissed the hand of Baal. Every time you think you're the only one, there's somebody else going through. Every time you think you're going through something bad, there's somebody going through something worse. Amen. The Bible says, count it all joy when you're going through diverse temptation in the book of James. We have to learn in the midst of everything we're going through because Jesus said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We have to learn to count everything joy. That's why the scriptures say, in all things, not something, but all things, give thanks unto the Lord. Make your prayer and supplication known with all thanksgiving unto the Lord. We have to praise him no matter what. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I look back over my life, when I seen where I've been and where I should have been already, when I looked at the sins I've done and the death that death would have took me at those particular moments in the hell, I lift my eye. When I look at people that I love dearly and I know they died in their sins and yet I'm still here. Amen. The songwriter said, I'm still here. Many started out with me, but yet they gone astray. But I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to his hand. See, the song goes on to say, see, when I was young, I gave God my hand and I told him to lead the way. Though I've been talked about, oh, yes, I've been criticized. I had to wipe many tears from my eyes. But the Bible says, many started out with me. But they gone astray. But I'm still holding on. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're by yourself. But you're only holding on because of the grace of God. You're only holding on because God gave you strength to fight. He gave you strength to hold on. When you're in the midnight hour and you're alone in your room and you're crying and you feel like there's no hope. He said, there's hope in Jesus. He said, because I came. I told you what the thief came to do. He came to steal your hope, steal your joy, steal your life, steal your children. He said he came to kill and destroy everything you believe in. He said, but I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly because I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you. You may leave me, but I will never leave you. You may stray away from me, but I never stray away from you. The Bible says arms are not too short that he can't reach down and save. His ears are not closed, amen, that he can't hear you. He's omnipotent. He omnipresent. He's almighty God. Hey, man, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Matter of fact, the scripture asks the question, is there anything too hard for God? No, it ain't. You just got to believe. And if it don't happen when you want it to, then you get a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mentality. O king, live forever. The God we serve, we know he's able. He may not do it. He may not even come when I want him. But we know he's able because he's always on time. Hey, man, we would not bow down. No matter what went on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we would not bow down and worship another God. And see, when we're going through our trials and tribulations, the devil tell you, bow down and worship me, and I make it all right. But we refuse to bow down and kiss the hand of Baal. We refuse to bow down and worship the devil because our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no individual, nobody can go to the Father except through him and there's people teaching you that jesus is not the only way get away from that false doctrine get away from that antichrist spirit the bible is true the bible is the only book that was written over two thousand years ago and yet every year it's the best-selling book and yet for over two thousand years hitler and many others that have tried to destroy the bible try to destroy god's chosen people the jews the israelites and yet they prevail the only nation that's surrounded by a country of muslim outnumbered out uh, surrounded and all they got to do is drive them in the sea and they've been trying to drive them in the sea amen since 1948 and even before the end and yet they cannot destroy them the 10 day war that happened in the 70s hey amen they went in there tricked and lied to by russia to go in there to destroy israel and yet they couldn't destroy them but let me tell you what god did 
eat, they couldn't even destroy him. But not only did God allow them to prevail and fought the battle for them, they pushed the Muslim, outnumbered by the Muslim, pushed them back, and they regained Jerusalem. And yet America, Harry S. Truman, was the first president to ever recognize Israel as a nation. That's why America's so blessed. Because America blessed God's people. Abraham said, I bless those that bless you. And I curse those that curse you. That's what God told Abraham. Amen. And then, I, whether you believe it or not, the man that most of us don't care for, Donald Trump was the first president to acknowledge that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. All this is Bible prophecy. The same book they've been trying to destroy for years. It's still coming true. And it's going to come true. The rapture is going to take place. God is not going to leave us. He's going to take us with him. The rapture is going to take place. And so many people are going to be left behind because they don't believe. They heard it. They heard about it. They say they believe. But if they truly believe, they'll get right and they'll change. The old song said, get right, church, and let's go home. A lot of us ain't getting right. We enjoy the fruits of this world. We forget that God sees everything, knows everything, and the book of remembrance is being written in the book of Malachi. The things you're doing are being written down. The sins you do are being written down. But repentance can get it written out. Amen. God will never leave his people. If we stay humble, we chase after him. We get in his word. We keep praying to him. We keep seeking him. We keep fasting. We keep getting in his presence, getting in the revelation of his word. Amen. Get into a spirit of worship and praise. God said he'll never leave us. I believe that. Do you? God wants to take us home with him. And the reason the world is being delayed because he's giving so many people a chance to change. We still, you and I still believe in God for our children, our parents, our siblings, our cousins, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunts, good friends, co-workers. We believe in God to save them. Because you know just as well as I know if the world ended today, so many are going to lose their soul. And if you don't catch the rapture, the mark of the beast is going to come on the scene. And everybody that know anything about church know that if you take the mark, you never get into heaven. God ain't going to leave us. We leave him. But he's going to separate the spirit from the body of Christ. Amen. And all of those in Christ are going to be caught up. The spirit going to be removed. And the spirit get removed. The Antichrist coming on the scene. You don't want to be here for that. So since God don't leave us nor forsake us why he's here, when it's time for him to go, we need to go too. When it's time for the spirit of Christ to leave here, we need to go too. Because ain't nothing coming after that but prediction of the scriptures and revelation. The vows and the seals will be open. You don't want to be here for that. But understand that since we know God will never leave us nor forsake us, let's get right, church, and go home. Let's get right. Since we don't know the day or the hour, not only when Jesus will return, but when we'll leave here. Most of us assume we're going to wake up in the morning. We don't know. And since we don't know, it's good to get it right tonight. Repent while you got a chance. Accept Jesus as your Savior while you got a chance. We just don't know. We just don't know. But we need to right, get right while we got a chance. So many people enjoying the fruits of this world. They living their best life. Their best life is going to cause them misery forever. I have more fun since I've been saved than before I got saved. I thought drinking, getting my head bad, chasing women was fun. I have more peace and fun and joy being around the saints and clown. I clown with unsaved people because that's my personality. I don't cross the line when it comes to the word of God. But I have had more clean fun in my life since I've been saved than I ever have. I got joy, unspeakable joy. I got peace that surpasses all understanding. I got knowledge of the Holy Spirit. I got word of wisdom, word of knowledge that's flowing in my veins. I got revelation of the word of God through the Holy Spirit. I got Jesus. And my name is written in the book of life. You can get yours in there too. It's just making a choice. You ain't got to be perfect. Just try Confess Jesus as your Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your life. And from that moment on, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You may leave him. You may turn away from him, but he'll never leave you. He'll keep you chance at the chance to get it right. Then find an anointed church. Find a church that preaches the truth, preach the gospel. I don't care if it's white or black. Quit getting caught up. I'm going to a white church because I'm white. I'm going to a black church because I'm black. I'm going to an Asian church because I'm Asian. Get under the anointing. Get in a word that you can grow and develop. God is not concerned about race. How we? How can we expect to get to heaven when everybody's going to be there together and we can't even separate ourselves from races now? Get into a spiritual worship, not a spiritual mentality of, oh, I got to be in the black church or I got to be in a white church. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Get up under the anointing so we can walk in the revelation of God and never leave us nor forsake us. God 
will never leave us nor forsake us. Be encouraged. Payday is coming. Hold on. Keep fighting. Hold on. Keep fighting. Please keep fighting. Because Jesus is coming soon and so many people ain't going to be ready. So many people are not going to be ready. Don't let it be you. Keep fighting for your soul. And I leave y'all with this here. The song I like to encourage them on my other app. Something good is about to happen. Something God is about to take place. Something's good is about to happen. You got to believe it when you say it. Something God is about to take place. Believe the word of God. Speak life over yourself. Speak the word of comfort over yourself. Speak strength over yourself. Speak an anointing over your life. And watch God change things. God bless you. I love you. I hope I encourage you tonight. But I want to be real talk with you. I encourage you. I want it to be understanding and real. I love you in Jesus' name. And a darn thing you can do about it. God bless.